In this tutorial, you can learn how to construct CSS grid layouts for your projects in the future. You cannot apply it to your current projects yet because of limited browser support. I will lead you to the official documentation so that you can get the knowledge firsthand from the official source and not from a secondhand source. And you'll find that it's similar to the Flexbox layout module tutorial that we did a couple of weeks ago, but it has different properties and features that might better accomplish a task that you have before you. Okay, we're going to start with a blank HTML file. Now the first thing we'll do in the style element is set the body margin to zero pixels. That way that default space around the edge of a web page is removed. Now in the body element, I'm going to slap in the structure of my grid. And if we render this to ourselves, we'll see it's just a bunch of normal divs stacked vertically on top of each other. Now that's all we're going to do in the HTML. The rest is going to be CSS that will render the layout using these divs inside of this grid container. And each div has an ID, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Then they also have inner HTML content that reflects their ID, just for demonstration purposes. That way you can keep track of where you are in your columns and rows in the grid. Now we're going to target this grid container by its ID. So we'll put the pound sign, type in grid, opening, closing, curly brace. Now what we can do is set the display property to grid. And that's what it will look like in the future. But for now we're going to have to test in Internet Explorer because it's only available in Internet Explorer 10 and greater. That's the only browser you can test with for now. So we'll put in MS prefix for Internet Explorer. At first, let's leave the prefix off. So you can see there's no change. But now, let me change this to the MS prefix. And you'll see that this property takes effect now. Refresh. You see how they're all stacked on top of each other now. All of the grid items, because we have to assign the layout for the grid. Our grid has eight items in it. So on the next line in our CSS, we're going to target the grid columns. There's going to be four columns in this particular grid. So I'm going to set each column to 25%. So they fill 25% of the space. Now we'll target the rows in the grid layout, which is going to be two rows. So four columns, two rows gives us eight items. So for the rows, they're going to have a height of 50% of the viewport height. That means half of the screen. Now in the next style rule, I'm just going to target all of the child div elements, all of the grid items inside of the grid container. So we target the grid and we specify children of the grid all. And we give them each a background gray, border of black, and a font size of 75 pixels. Now if we look at what that renders, let's refresh, and we'll see that they have the look that we want, but they're still all stacked on top of each other. So all we have to do now is position them. So under that style rule, we'll put in these. And each one affects each one of the grid items by their ID. So we target grid item A, and we specify that its grid column position is going to be 1. And then the grid row position it will have is also one so it's going to be the first box here before I explain let's take a look at it so you have a b c d e f g h and no matter what size the screen is the grid still keeps its proportions because of the way that we've set the sizing here and I'll change these sizes in a moment to show you what happens so you can see that all you have to do is target the position that you want each grid item to live for instance if I want C to live in this location where E is, all I have to do is target row 2, column 1. So let's go to C and put it at column 1, row 2. And then let's go to E and put it where C was, which was column 3 of row 1. Now you'll see that they have swapped position. E is now here and C is now here. So you see how I'm targeting where I want these elements to live inside of the grid. It's very simple. All right, so now let's put those values back. So everything is in its proper order. 
But something like that would come in really handy if you're making layouts and you want to allow a client to change the position of where some column is, maybe swap a left column out for the right column, move the position of menu items and things like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and change these numbers for the column. So this is column 1, 2, 3, and 4. And you see we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I change this one to 15 and this one to 35, and then we refresh, you see? This one only takes up 15%. This one now takes up 35%. So if I put this on 30 and this on 70 and then refresh. Okay, let's put our values back. Now I'm going to also offer you guys a cool website layout that's made from the grid module. So let's replace this code with that code. Now let's refresh our document. So you see? What you have is pretty much a website layout. You have an aside element here, nav element, or your main page content section, the footer and the header, everything in place, and it scales. You keep everything liquid or responsive or whatever you want to call it. So you can see in the HTML, we're just targeting the body element and we're making that the grid. So you don't have to actually target a div or anything like that. You can target the body itself as the grid container. And we use the new HTML5 header element, the new HTML5 nav element, the new HTML5 footer, and the new HTML5, HTML5 aside element. Now I'll lead you to the official documentation. That way you can explore all of the features involved and you won't have to rely on some second-hand source which every other website other than the one that I'm going to lead you to now is a second-hand source so you might as well go straight to the horse's mouth and get the knowledge from the same place that educators like myself universities and everybody else who's doing good serious educational work this is where they get the information from okay the first document that I'm going to link you to is the first grid layout proposal and you can see that there's a ton of examples with nice illustrations that show you what, what's going on and it explains every single detail of all the features involved they give you nice code examples and there's a ton of examples there and all the documentation that you need for if you go down to the bottom you'll see all of the properties involved so if you want to get to know for instance here I'm using uh, grid column span so if you want to get to know what that's doing you just go to grid column span click it and it'll take you to that point in the document which explains the spanning or any of the other features that you want to investigate and experiment with now there's also the in the code here I'm using the FR unit and that might confuse a lot of people when they see it so what you want to do is go to the official documentation and I think it's section 5 let's see there it is 6.5.1 fraction values that's what the FR unit is Now you can read all about it so you don't have to get any explanation of that from some secondhand source now the second document that I'm going to link you to is the newer grid layout module working draft now if you go all the way to the bottom you'll see that the same similar examples exist here and some different ones some newer ones and if you go to the bottom you'll see that there's different properties proposed now but you can find that some of these don't even work but it might benefit you to see the newer updated documentation about the grid layout module all right so I'll have both of these code examples on the page under the video where it displays at developphp.com I hope this information helps you with building grid layouts in the future.